Thank you for joining us. I think you'll be glad you did. Our best of three today features two players who score extremely high on the fun to watch index. Our Zerg player is more than fly, he is Bly! The Ukrainian Zerg, the master of confusion, has climbed all the way to number 24 in the world right now. Conversely, our American Protoss player's world ranking has dropped to number 13. Hold that thought, we've got cheese! That scouting pattern is pure cheddar. Getting proxy? That's not something our Protoss player is gonna need! Neeb's got 150 minerals, so he is going to drop that gate, and he is going to scout. The gate and go is something he also really needs. Neeb's going to need to catch on to this skullduggery as soon as possible. Man, that drone could not look any more shady if he tried. He's got 300 minerals. We're going to see a proxy hatch, and it's going to be at the Protoss third location. What? There's a second drone headed out. The plot thickens. This game's off to a roaring start. Maybe that second drone is just pretending to be a regular scout? Minimize the chance that Neeb will suspect, and maybe deny the natural at the same time. Meanwhile, Neeb Scout sees that the Zerg has no natural. Mayday, mayday! But when he gets to the main, he sees there's no pool there either. Which means the money had to be spent somewhere. Neeb wants to expand anyway. He's gonna try to chase that drone out. Spawning pool goes down for Zerg. Now there's a third drone going out. What's going on? Is, is Bly gonna expand at his natural too? He doesn't have the minerals. I think he's just trying to sell it to Neeb. Natural and Core are down for Protoss. That pesky drone's still running around with no health. That is dangerous. Oh, he's gas capped the Protoss. You've been extractorized, baby. Bly's still pretending he's gonna expand. Watch him actually do it and totally blow my mind. I'm pretty sure we're looking at some kind of two hatch all in. We'll get a better idea once that spawning pool pops. We won't have to wait long. Pretty much everything's gonna complete at the same time. Core, pool, and hatch, all the big stuff, coming online shortly. Bly uses his fake-out drone for another extractor. Core's here, Neeb's gonna chrono boost a stalker. Pool's here, and Zerg's gonna go with... a Roach Warren. And one queen at the proxy, and Ling Speed. And two Lings and a partridge in a pear tree. Creep spreading from that hatch, but Neeb still hasn't seen it. The forecast calls for roaches on his doorstep. He needs to know about it. There it is. He chases an overlord, and that's going to let him see the creep. How will Neeb react? He immediately starts a shield battery. Good response. And he's chrono-boosting a second stock. There's a couple of lings dancing around out there. And the queen is just about to spawn. It always looks like she squeezes out some gastric tube. There it is. And the queen immediately moves to plant a creep tumor. Neeb sends out a scouting probe, but a couple of lings pick it up. It runs back to the shelter of the base where the stalkers are there. Neeb starts production of stalker number three. And a robo facility. Does he suspect the roaches? An immortal could be essential for holding that off. And speaking of roaches, Bly's queuing up four right now. Roaches spawn, roaches spawn. Oh, and Bly's adding ravager tech. Two of them. We could be seeing corrosive biles hitting that wall. Oh, Neeb's gonna add another shield battery to lock himself in. He's gonna try to hunker down to weather this storm. But that means he won't be able to get out to do any attacks of opportunity. And Bly's gonna be free to rain corrosives with impunity. Three shield batteries should let him take a lot of punishment though. Ling speed finishes, and a third Ravager's on the way. Oh, Neeb changes his mind. He cancels the third shield battery and brings his forces out. But he finds himself outgunned. He does have an immortal on the way. Oh, this is tense. Bly's totally stopped making drones. He's adding a dozen speedlings to his attack. Neeb has a five probe worker lead already. If he can find a way to somehow survive this, he will be far ahead. Bly has to make this work. Neeb shoots down the ramp to keep the Zerg player honest. He can't let him just morph Ravagers right outside his base. But it might be too late for that. All four Roaches are Ravagers now, and the Link Count's about to go up to 28. The Immortal's here now. If Neeb doesn't want to be a punching bag, he's going to have to risk coming out. But very soon, there's going to be a ton of Lings waiting to surround him if he tries. Neeb needs some area of effect damage, but he's a long ways away from that. He's only just starting warp gates now. This is tense. He's gonna have to find a way to play for time. He is pulling in a lot more minerals than his opponent. That will start to make a difference. Oh, but Bly's not gonna let him wait. He's starting to get aggressive on that front door. Neeb's going back up to three shield batteries. Does Bly have enough corrosive Biles to force the issue? Biles up! 
and he nukes the shield battery. The Immortal is getting shots in on those Ravagers. But unlike their earlier form, the Roach, Ravagers do not have the armored tank. That means the Immortal damage drops from 50 to 20 per shot. Bly understands it. He adds two more Roaches and immediately turns them to Ravagers. Six corrosive vials in concert are going to obliterate buildings. It's suddenly getting very crowded up there for Neeb. He needs space to dodge and he's not going to have it. A bunch of vials are starting to go up. Oh, he's targeting the core. He's not going to let the work gate upgrade finish. This is going to absolutely punish the Protoss. We've been seeing a lot of games where having that core as part of the wall has been a problem. There's the trans-dimensional conflagration. Neeb's core is no more. The Protoss barn door is open. And Bly's looking to make it bigger. Now he's going after the warp gates. Neeb only has two and they're both part of his wall. They're very exposed. There goes one. And now the Zerg is forcing his way up the ramp. The sentry tries to block with a force field. But a bile brings it right down. Zerg is inside the natural. Neeb uses a warp prism to micro the immortals. They're picking away at the Ravagers. They're forcing them back. But the Lings have made it into the main. Bly's Ravagers have pulled back. They're waiting for reinforcements from those streaming Lings. And now they have them. They're pouring him back inside. Neeb blocks the ramp to his main with the Immortals. But his last gate goes down. Neeb hits the GG. His base thoroughly eviscerated. What a great assault by Bly. That is so hard to hold. So, let the hindsight bias commentary begin. First off, it's been a pretty common theme of a few Protoss games now, where we see the core get annihilated in the Protoss wall, and it's been a death knell blow almost every single time. Are we going to see a strategic change where Protoss decides it can no longer afford to expose their cores and their defense wall? I mean, I get why it's there. With shields, it's 1,100 hit points, all for only 150 minerals. But that's only 100 more hit points than a gateway. Am I crazy to think Toss has to start looking at alternatives so they don't lose their ability to produce anything but zealots? I mean, it's called core for a reason. Second, since we have the benefit of total vision, we can see there were a few moments earlier on where Protoss could have charged down the ramp and overpowered the Zerg contain. That's easy for me to say, but if you're Neeb, you have to be worried that as soon as you step down the ramp, you get encircled by cheap lings, and you lose your expensive immortals, and the game. There was, though, a window in time in which that would not have happened. The problem is, how is Neeb supposed to know that? Maybe by devoting hours on hours and hours to watching replays of this kind of attack. I actually thought the sit-back-and-get-stronger approach of Neeb was a good one here. He was outmining his all-in opponent. If he had managed to save his core, or perhaps start warp gapes earlier on than he did, it, it was kind of late, maybe he survives long enough to get that death ball. Or maybe even some area of effect damage. Can't critique Bly here, though. He looked awesome at every single step as he executed a game plan that was as potent as it was entertaining. Only thing left to do, really, is to go to... We are back, and I have some troubling news. It's suddenly backwards day, and that means there's no reason for me to tell you where we've been. Okay, that was as weird as it was juvenile, but I'm kind of stoked about this game. There's that low ground pylon. Zerg executed to perfection in game one, so give it up for Ilb. When these two players faced off just eight days earlier, Neeb 2 0 would Bly. Now that the rematch is underway, it appears Bly's prepared some very specific builds. But what is as generic as toast is that gateway. But some jalapeno jam on that toast is whatever this drone is up to. That rally point is unnatural. But this natural is natural. Neeb has sent out a scouting probe after that gateway. But he's not going to see this drone scurrying off. And that hatchet is natural. It's going to help mask whatever it is that Bly's up to. When Bly cheesed last game, he only had a hatchet as main. That's a lot easier for your opponent to piece together. There's a risk that Neeb's going to misread this as a standard build. There's that extractor, only a couple seconds late. I don't think that Neeb can read into that. Especially when he sees that spawning pool go down. Certainly doesn't look like it's going to stop him from expanding it as natural. There goes the Nexus. 
the black void that is the Protoss soul. And here comes the core that is so often destroyed. It's going to be the center of Neeb's wall. But I do appreciate, guys, that every Protoss does this, and for good reason. Maybe we can equalize things and criticize Bly. He's got his proxy drone out there a few seconds too early. He probably could have snuck in another mineral trip or two. He's almost got the 300 for the proxy hatch, so he goes in now. And... There it is. Will Neeb check his third this time? It's definitely a variation, but at the end of the day, he's getting cheese pretty much the same way. The spawning pool pops. But I don't see any queens getting produced. Just a couple lings. Bly suspiciously saving his money. Is Neeb gonna pick up on that? Oh, there's a queen. I'm wrong. Bly's just a little slow on that queen production. Oh, or is he? He cancels it. That was just for show. No queens. He's going for Zergling speed and a Roach Warren again. Ravagers on the doorstep worked once. Why not do it again? Neeb has still not scouted this. With the Protoss core complete, Neeb's going for a Stargate for his initial tech choice. Maybe a Void Ray could help him? Roach Warren's halfway complete and there are eight Lings in production. Protoss has an Adept on the map. That has scouting potential. Will he pick up what's going on at the third? No, he won't. But he will pick up the first blood. I think that means the hatch is going to complete unscouted. He is making a stalker and researching warp gates. He's getting it earlier this time around. No sign of anything coming out of that stargate yet. And as soon as I say that, he starts an oracle. Neeb's adept is going to check that third. As soon as he does, there's going to be some serious clacks and alarm bells going off. The game is afoot. He has been had and he knows it. But there's already Lings out on the map, and they're about to get speed. Neeb's bringing that Adept home to defend. Just one last Shade Scout of that natural. Because the attack has already begun! The Lings initiate the door challenge, while a single Roach morphs into a Ravager. Neeb commences a second layer wall composed of pylons. Stalker goes down, and Ling's speed is complete. Ravager's gonna take a bile shot at that core, and Neeb's gonna try to focus it down with an Oracle. Bly does have a queen to try to protect it. Oh, the Lings have turned their attention to the core. The Ravager's down, but there's already more morphing in front of his base. Ah, there's the core conflagration. Neeb's gonna begin his shield battery production, but the Zerg is just savaging the wall. Once again, Neeb does have the worker an income advantage. Bly made the extra hatch, but he never populated it with workers. He's definitely in win now mode and has a much larger arm. Wall is breached, probes are pulled. Zerg is inside the natural. Neeb rebuilds his core and he's trying to get his oracle count up. But there might be more lings than energy. This appears to be going even better for Zerg than game one. It's gotta be nice not to have to worry about immortals. The lings go to town on the shield batteries. 11 probes are dead, there's no workers at the natural. And now the lings attack the main. Neeb's oracles have their hands absolutely full. So much so that they realize they don't actually have hands. Sure, they can kill that Ravager, but are they going to have any energy left? Suddenly, Bly's equal on workers. Neeb's absolutely desperate to stabilize. He gets the Ravager, but is he ready to face that queen? He just can't defend both bases at once. There is only one gate for Protoss. There is a ton of larva for the Zerg. The worker kills are piling up. They're going to be just too much. Bly is just pumping lings at this point. Is there anything Neeb can do? No, there is not. He can type GG, I suppose, which he does. That's the game, that's the series. And it might have been our quickest yet. Nothing like dancing Zerg to improve your mood. Okay, enough clowning. All right. Not gonna lie, game two did kind of feel like a rinse and repeat thing. It was another proxy hatch Ravager rush. Only this time, Neeb fared even worse, and we got even less back and forth than in the first game. Though, I suppose if you enjoy watching probes get dismembered and cyber cores explode, game two had a lot to offer. But, from a strategic standpoint, Bly brought us a very interesting series. We've seen this before. Where Bly doesn't just plan one game, he plans out the entire match and makes his opponent pay for it. Game one was a straight up ambush, but it was game two that had the genius. He pulled essentially the same strat, but
but disguised it as a macro game. After game one, Neeb knew or thought he knew what Bly's Ravager Rush looked like. No hatchet the natural, no queen. So Bly showed him the opposite. He built a hatchet as natural, and he pretended to build a queen for Neeb's probe scout. Neeb saw no reason to scout his third and paid the price. If Neeb sees this earlier, I think he can adapt. He gets those shield batteries up in a century and those links don't break in. At least not until Protoss builds the death ball and punishes the Zerg. I'd like to honor Bly here with my official player to watch graphic, but you guys already know all about him and the cunning he brings to RTS games. Especially you Warcraft 3 fans. His savviness is not new. I'm going to make sure to link another Bly series at the end of this video in case you want to see more of what he's capable of. It'll be in the Kerrigan box. At least, I hope it will. Somebody let me know if I screw it up. Lastly, I want to thank all my new subscribers. You guys really help keep me going. So let me just say, live life! Because nobody wants to die twice in a row to a Ravager Rush. I, I mean in hold position. To continue your StarCraft journey, Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stimpack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugzwang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugzwang out.